All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to give you six ways that you can use SEMrush to improve your SEO. So we'll go through the process and I'll show you the six different things that you can do, which is going to help you with your website overall. So number one is going to be keyword research. So the beginning of any SEO campaign is going to be the keyword research. So you need to start by figuring out what keywords you actually want to rank for so that you can make the appropriate optimizations on your website and do what you need to do. So the first thing that I would do in this, in the case of keyword research, now to preface that I've already got a video I've done in depth on how to do keyword research. I'm going to put a link above for that. So you should go watch that one. But to give you a quick overview, what I would do is start with the main keyword that you want to search. You would want to type in whatever the main keyword is. So let's say you're you're doing like you're selling men's Nike running shoes, let's just say you would type in the main keyword that you think it is and you want to establish whatever the main keyword is and then all the subsequent keywords you should be targeting. So what you do, you set it to your location, obviously, wherever you're targeting. And then you want to find out whatever the main keyword is that you want to go after. So in this case, if it's Nike men's running shoes, the one with the highest volume is typically the main keyword. So in this case, it would be Nike running shoes for men. That would be the main keyword. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that and I'm going to add it to a notepad and put it aside. And so now we've got the main keyword. Now what you also need to do is go and establish all the subsequent keywords you'd want to rank for. So in this case, I imagine there would be a bunch of shoe models that you would probably want to rank for. You can go and pull out this whole list here. And I would also pull out this questions list as well. So we'll open both of them because these questions are really good blogs that you can use for SEO as well. So what we'll do is take a look at the whole list. And what you want to do is pick out the keywords people are searching that are related to this. So basically all of these are variations except Pegasus 39 so that's a model you'd want to target that type of shoe you'd want to find the rest of them as well there's also best so that could be a blog i would probably put that i'm going to put that below best nike men's running shoes that could be a good blog so you want to do that invisible three in theory when you see something like black you can make collections for colors and you could have like black ones white ones etc depending on what the keywords people search are revolution six, etc. So I think you get the point you would go down the list, figure out all like the subsections of the things you're trying to rank for. And then now you know what you need to list on your website, what type of pages, etc, that you want to include so that you want to rank for these subsequent ones as well. Because obviously, they're part of what you're selling, assuming you're selling those models. So you would do that. So if it's like plumbing, it would be different plumbing services. If it's a lawyer, it'd be different law services, etc, etc, you apply the same principle. And so what happens is you will end up with a big list of key keywords with various topics that you want to rank for at the end of it. And so now you have a list of the keywords that you're trying to go after. And now you can optimize your site accordingly. So that's that for keyword research. That's the overview of it. Again, go watch my video. The link will be in the description below as well, which is far more in depth of how to do keyword research. I highly recommend you do that. The other thing I mentioned earlier, I'll just bring up quickly is the questions. All of these questions are typically good to include as FAQs and usually blog posts as well. They give you easy content so you can use them. So no matter what you're searching, there's usually a list of questions people ask about it. And you can go through and answer them and rank for these questions, which help you both establish yourself as an authority on that topic and actually get traffic for this as well. That's that for those. The second thing you would do from here is now you would take this and you would go and do position rank tracking. So if you're doing SEO, you need to see if you're what you're doing is actually working if you're actually ranking for the keywords that you're trying to rank for. So what you can do in SEMrush is set up a position tracking, which you can also make into a report later. So you would go into position tracking, you'd set up a project, create project, you type in your website, I've already got some set up, but let's say whatever your domain is like Nike running shoes.com, you hit create project, and then you'd add all the keywords that you want to rank for. So like, the, you know, we pulled the ones out from before, let's say we're just going to put United States for the sake of this one go keywords and now you know we can paste all these keywords we pulled from earlier paste them in here you start tracking and then what's going to happen is you're going to end up with a campaign for example this one which is going to track your keywords on a daily basis and it's going to give you what keywords you rank for what went up what went down where you are now you can change the dates so you can see the date ranges etc which is then going to allow you to track what you're doing what kind of progress you're making so obviously see now you would see okay i've made a blog about let's say best 350z rims am I actually ranking for that based on the work I've done? And so you do that for, you know, all the keywords that you're trying to rank for. And that's how you keep track of what's actually going on. So what you usually do is you do the keyword research, set up
got the position tracking and now you can actually start putting everything together. So the next thing you can do is actually competitor research. So let's say for instance that you are selling Nike men's running shoes. What you can do is you can go back to that main keyword. So we'll go back to the keyword tool. You can either do this here on Google and pull them manually. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second. We'll go to the main keyword and now you're going to have the top people who rank for this. Now obviously Nike is going to be the one that's going to rank for this the most. You obviously can't really compete with them but you can compete with these other guys. So for instance you could open them. You could open them. You can open them. You can go to page two as well and you could do this for all of the individual models of shoe as well that you're trying to rank for. So basically any keyword that you're trying to rank for you want to do at least some competitive research on. So now you can open this one as well and basically what we're trying to do here is take a look at what what we need to do to rank against these guys. So I'm opening all these different sites and I'm opening their analysis in SEMrush because SEMrush gives us some good information about these sites. So we can see here firstly let's go back to where we were. So firstly we can see here what the authority score of the page it's ranking is and how many referring domains and backlinks there are for just the specific page. So let's say for instance Dick's Sporting Goods you can see here that their page authority score just on this page is 38. They have 29 referring domains and 52 backlinks. Now the difference between referring domains and backlinks is referring domains is the actual domain itself but they might have like two links going to the site and so that would count as two backlinks but one referring domain. You can see here that they've got that. These guys have 13 referring domains. Nordstrom have 16 and that's just to that page. So if you want to rank for the same keyword you know that you are going to have to do at least the same amount. So it gives you an idea of, of how many links you're going to have to get. So you can see Foot Locker as well. Now what you have to keep in mind with this and this was going to be my next point is that you need to take a look at the domain's authority as well. So it's not just the page and how many links each page has but you want to take a look at the competitors and see what they actually have going to the whole site. So how powerful the site is, what their authority score is. We'll take a look in a sec. How many backlinks they have etc. And you can also see what backlinks they have and I'm going to show you that in a second and then try and go after those. So you can see here now that Foot Locker on the actual domain has an authority score of 69 and they have 13 million backlinks from 35,000 domains. So that's quite a lot of links that you're going to have to try and get something in that range to try and compete against them. Now you might be able to compete against them on easier keywords. You don't necessarily have to do it but if you're trying to outrank them for some of these harder keywords like let's say Jordan 3 which gets 300,000 searches this is probably going to be a very competitive keyword. You're going to need somewhere along the lines of these backlinks. If we take a look at Dick's Sporting Goods same thing 7 million backlinks from 57,000 domains. Running Warehouse similar sort of situation and Nordstrom similar sort of North Nordstrom is 100,000. So you can see here that clearly the pattern here is that one, you've got Nike, who's obviously going to be brand relevant and very authoritative. Plus everyone else on page one is extremely authoritative. This tells us that this is going to be extremely competitive to rank for. And so now you know what you're up against. You know now approximately how many links you're going to have to get, what kind of authority score you're aiming for, etc., to try and compete with these guys. So that's that for competitors. You can also see what they are ranking for, what keywords they're ranking for as well and see perhaps if you should branch out to maybe some other products or there's other blogs you should be targeting you can definitely use them by going into the organic search and the keywords and seeing what keywords they rank for you can get some ideas for content from there too and potentially branch out into that so those are some things you can do with competitors the next thing is backlinks which i've already kind of touched on but basically what you can do here is you can find backlinks from competitors and then try and get your site on those sites as well. So basically I've opened up the main competitors for let's say the Nike men's running shoes. You can see that if we go into referring domains or into backlinks either one, we can take a look and see what actual sites are linking to them. And another thing you can also do is you can do a basic backlink analysis. So if we go to like backlink analytics and we throw the website in, we'll be able to get an idea of what they have you can see here it's giving it us already the backlink analytics it actually tells us what they've got so how many referring domains over time how many they received where they come from what categories was the authority score of each of the websites that linked to them and so on and now we can go into the list i opened previously and actually see each of the referring domains that actually link to them and so if you do go through this list from all of your different competitors you can also export this as a csv or an excel to make it easier you can filter through these and then try and outreach to a lot of these websites 
websites and see if you can also get a link on some of these websites as well. Now, keep in mind with something of this kind of volume, a lot of this will be natural and just comes from social media and things they've done over the years. So it's going to be very hard to do that, at least in a short time span. But for more local businesses or easier niches, you're not really going to be dealing with something like this. You're going to be dealing with like maybe a few hundred or a few thousand. And then from there, you're only going to have a few of them that are actually going to be relevant to try and get on. So it's, so it's going to be a lot easier in most cases. But this is an extreme example of what you'd be looking at. But that's how you can get the backlinks. And you can go through and do that for each of these guys. Exactly the same thing. Click there. Nordstrom, same thing. And you can go through the list, put the list together and see if you can get listed on some of these websites. Whether you need to outreach them, whether you need to pay them, get a listing, whatever the case is. But that's how you can find out who your competitors are ranking on and are, are linked to and how you can get those links as well. Now, the next thing you can do is a site audit. So if you want to audit your own website, it's already been up and running or it's already there and you want to do it, you can actually set up a site audit in SEMrush. So if we click here in site audit, you set up a project and what's going to happen is it will, SEMrush will do a site audit. So I'm going to click one that I've already set up previously. And basically it just gives you a breakdown of everything SEMrush has been able to analyze. It gives you an overall health score, any errors or warnings it's found, any notices and any things you need to fix, like let's say 404s, broken internal links, content issues, loading speed issues. You can see this, you go down here and correct any of these that you need to correct. And it's a quick way of just seeing what's going on without having to manually go and test the loading speed. Have a look at all your internal links and all these other things as well that you might need to do. It also tells you the crawled pages and a bunch of other things you can go through here as well, which is sort of similar to what you get in Google Search Console in some cases, but this gives you some data that Google Search Console won't. So that's gonna help you with that as well. So that's the good thing about site audit. You can really spend some time in here and try and correct all these things if you're really want to but it gives you a lot of it like upfront easier instead of you having to dig and now the last point that i want to bring up in this video is the content template tool so if you go into content marketing samrush will actually give you content templates for seo so if you type something in let's say nike men's running shoes and create content template it's actually going to give you a template to make content for this particular keyword. And what will happen is SEMrush will analyze page one of Google. It'll take a look at all your competitors and it will put together a content template for you, including semantically related keywords, etc. Now this one is not a very good example because most of these probably don't have many much content on these pages for Nike men's running shoes. And obviously, as you can see, it's mainly cookie policies and things like that. So obviously this is not very related, but what I've done is I've thrown in another one, which is Plumbers Miami, Florida, just as an example. And you can see here, it's giving us more actual keywords like Miami, Florida, emergency plumbing services, water heaters, commercial plumbing, etc, etc. And so it's going to give you an idea of what you need to write based on what your competitors on Google have for the particular keyword you've thrown in. It also gives you ideas of where you could potentially get backlinks, which is quite useful. And then what you can also do is go into the SEO writing assistant. And this is going to analyze the text you have that you're writing and tell you what words you can include here as well. You can see it'll do like rephrasing, readability scores, what key keywords you should input. So you try recommending, try adding these recommended keywords, etc. It's similar to what Surfer does, kind of, where it, it just tries to help you make your content more SEO optimized. So you could use this as well. Now, I don't have any content thrown here at the moment, but you get the idea. You could paste your content in here and it will give you suggestions here on the right telling you what you should do. So those are the six ways that you can use SEMrush to optimize your website for SEO. If you have any questions about any of that, put them in the comments below and I will answer them. Otherwise, if you'd like me to coach you how to do any of this and more to do with SEO and Google ads for only $49 a month, go to learndominatemarketing.com. And if you'd like us to do the SEO or Google ads for your business and get you results, go to dominatemarketing.io, book a call with us there. Catch you on the next one.